Welcome, everybody, to RimWorld Medieval Undead. I think, and I'm not trying to give myself too much of a, too much of an applause here, I think one of the coolest RimWorld mod packs we're probably ever going to play on the channel. As the name hints at, the goal this time around is to build a bustling medieval city in the face of a constant omnipresent zombie threat that's going to grow as we grow with our eventual win condition this time around. Having a colony of 50 people for an entire year. I think this is going to be challenging, but I don't think it's... I, I think it's far from impossible. There's going to be challenge coming from multiple aspects with the hostile factions coming to raid us alongside the constantly growing zombie threat. The more colonists we have, the more zombies are going to spawn in on the map and obviously try and get into our base to murder all of our people horribly. But we've got a lot of things to... Uh, hopefully balance things out and and allow us to try and achieve this goal as best as we can we have rim of magic but a heavily tweaked version of rim of magic to remove all of the magic i know it sounds a little counterintuitive but i'll go into more detail about that in a minute before i get too heavy into the explanation and introducing our characters here at the end of the video will be the seed, will be the install instructions, the mod settings, everything you'll need to play along if you want to. I'll also go ahead and provide the save game as you see it right now, as it is here. So if you want to dive in at the same map as me, with the same character as me from the same scenario, you can you can do that fairly easy. So first then, let's talk about the most important thing we've got going on here, and that is our starting characters. Leading our band, this time around we have the mighty beef portal a medic by trade an alchemist turned guardian who's seen all the death and the destruction in the world that is war torn and everyone is hostile everyone is trying to survive there is not a faction out there that we can ally to they are all out to protect themselves and that's it portal has seen the worst of it and he wants to cure the world if you'll forgive the cliche High medical skill, good melee, but his true talent is in bringing people under his banner, bringing people together, uniting everybody in the face of this constant zombie menace. Then we have his right-hand man, Ronnie Todger, a expert craftsman through and through, 15 construction and 15 crafting with a natural talent of smithing. Though he isn't skilled in melee or any sort of combat aspect as our other two characters are he is an incredible worker the true engineer of the colony the man who's going to lay the foundations to really build up this city then finally we have the true defender and the muscle of the colony smile sharply 16 shooting double passion natural talent with the bow which is eventually developed into being a full-on woodsman access to some of that rim of magic physical ability a uh, frontier marshal by childhood and a selfless hunter as an adult. I thought that one was very, very fitting for her. Along the way, helping people in need. Again, joining along with uh, Beef Portal and Ronnie Todger here to try and build some sort of sanctuary in a, in, in a sea of death. And as I hinted at earlier, we do have Rim of Magic in this mod pack, but we don't have the magic side of Rim of Magic. Rim of Magic is very, very powerful. To use it effectively and for it to be balanced you need to be up against a lot of enemy mages you need to ideally throw in a bit of tech there too so that there is that that kind of threat in combat however the zombies are their, their true threat comes from them getting up close and personal so i thought to really emphasize the fact that this is this is a medieval setting with with these heroes trying to rise up that will have the physical abilities but not the magical ones just because I think a fire mage versus a group of zombies is a fairly one-sided fight, let's be honest. So all of the physical abilities, things like gladiator, woodsman, rangers, knights, paladins, all of those are in and potentially accessible by our people. Smiles here is a woodsman, somebody who is very, very good at, at using the bow at, at ranged combat. She gets a range training and all of the various abilities that come with that. Portal, Beef Portal here, is physical adept, so can potentially become one of those other classes that I talked about. Or we could take him down the path of a 
Wayfarer, someone who's kind of generically gifted in combat without being dedicated to a certain thing. And as for difficulty this time around, we are playing on Main Art Medieval for our Medieval Storyteller there, along with a few other mods that help remove some of the other medieval or post-medieval technologies, with the exception of we are playing on Savage as the difficulty level. However, I've removed Colonist Instant Kills and Enemy Death on Down. Simply because the zombies themselves have a chance to infect somebody. Infection rate from zombies I've set to 50%. So half the time you'll be infected. However, a treatment in a bed will stop that infection. But, to make it even harder still, infections are very, very fast. So, whereas normally you would need zombie serum to cure a zombie bite, because we have, you know, much lower technology here, we don't have, you know, vitals, monitors, hospital beds, anything like that. As long as they are cured at some point, and we catch it quickly, we can cure the zombie infest in infection. And the reason I changed it like that is because we're going to be getting in there with swords and halberds and maces. They are going to get bitten very, very frequently. Plate mail can only stop so much. Now, you're all going to do me a favor and pretend this is the same map that you just saw. We spawned the, the first map we spawned on Crot literally had no mountains whatsoever. So obviously, I'll provide the save for this map instead, which I haven't looked around too much yet. Oh, wow. This is weird. Holy crap. I love the massive river running through the middle. We start with some uh, some some pretty powerful weapons to uh, to really set the bar. Because again, we could be up against 90 zombies here. And if the worst case happens, I don't know, see these people hit by a disease or something immediately. Or we get attacked by a wild animal that genuinely knocks one of them down. We could be in a lot of trouble when those potentially 90 zombies spawn in. So we've got a hammer for Ronnie. Oh, it's enchanted. Oh, it's not enchanted. Okay. Well, thank you. That's a massive disappointment. We've got an elephant bow for smiles, which you can craft yourself out of two elephant tusks. So I didn't think this was a particularly expensive one here, but it gives some bonuses to a physical character who's got that equipped. That's what the, uh, the, the kind of, like I said, knight or ranger or paladin class are called. They're referred to as, as physical classes. And then for Beef Portal, we have the Rune Bled, which I assume means Rune Blade, if I had to guess, which is a big friggin' sword. Uh, gives, again, some some bonuses. 25% damage boost. Now, the zombies themselves are very easy to kill. So, to be honest, a lot of this isn't massively useful. Deflection, as well, isn't going to help out against zombies. Cleaving Strike, though, might be pretty cool when he gets in a big group. If he's getting overwhelmed, he might be able to cut himself free. Because this is a medieval setting, we've got a lot of medieval work to do. Now, what I mean by that is we've got things like lumber rather than wood. When we chop a tree down, we need to... Uh, we need to actually turn that into usable wood that we can build with by drying it and processing it. Similarly, you might have noticed that we've got, if I can find it again, we don't have steel, we have iron. If we want to make steel, we have to process the iron in, in, a, in a furnace with coal and things like that. It, it's a very low-tech society with with a lot fleshing it out here, so it feels a bit more medieval. That's why I think it's going to be uh, I think this is going to be quite cool in terms of gameplay. There's, there's going to be something for every one of our 50 potentially colonists to do. So before we do anything else, let's put down a carpenter's trestle that lets us turn wood from trees actually into usable wood. We also need a wood drying rack, so that will harden the wood, so it's a lot tougher than uh, green wood, which is essentially freshly cut wood that you, you can build out of, but has quite low hit points. So we'll get this down as a as a kind of basic structure. How much lumber do we have again? We've got 300. We could build a basic palisade around the base. We've got about two days, 21 hours until the zombies turn up. So we've got that amount of time to basically cut down as many trees as possible, dry as much lumber as possible, and really shore up some walls. I think I'm going to say, hey, let's just chop everything down. And, and to be fair, let's, let's throw down some very, very basic crops. Now, we've got fishing we could be doing to keep the colony afloat just kind of temporarily, no pun intended. Let's throw down a very basic fishing zone and just go like rice or something really easy and straightforward to start off with here. We don't need that much food, but we don't also start with any food, so we've got to be a bit careful about things. I think I'll say let's harvest all of this crap too, just so we've got something to... Something to keep us going. We've got all of the simple chains mods, which add the ability to, you know, like I said, chop down trees, turn that into lumber, and then dry it into, into full-on wood. We've got one for leather as well, and I think there's another one. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But it just adds a little bit more complexity to things, because you don't really have a, a huge amount to do if you just try playing, you know, kind of base game remote as medieval. There is a slight bug with one of the texture packs we've got going on right now, and that's with the tool cabinets. For some reason... They are the largest man I've ever seen, Fat Larry notwithstanding. It's just, a, it's just a texture glitch. Many people have reported it on the Steam Workshop, so hopefully over the course of the next couple of days, they'll um, they'll fix whatever the hell is causing that. That counts as crafting, right. Okay, Ronnie, let's go ahead and do that. I should have done that anyway, because he's our blacksmith. 
Right now, keeping things fairly focused. Very plant heavy. Obviously, very building heavy too. Let's get him working on that straight away, to be honest. The sooner we get this done, the better. Then drying the wood counts as brewing. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so there is our wood production going pretty smoothly. We've got enough food to last us a couple of days. We've got 80 agave there. It, it, it's not fantastic, but I guess for the time being, it's fine. I should really limit them to a certain area as well. We've got another two, two days, nine hours before the zombies turn up, but if Smile starts wandering off like this when they're actually here, it could be a bit of a problem. I think Smiles can handle herself. Out of everybody, she can handle herself the most. Do that to start off with. And we'll say anywhere in there is absolutely fine. I don't really want to cross them that far over the river in hindsight. Let's clear some of that off. Just because the zombies in mass actually might be able to catch them at that stage. So it does take a little while to actually fully cure this lumber. As you see, 10 hours left and we're 36% of the way through. So let's just use the last of what we've got right now. Not to build a, a house or beds or anything like that. We just need to throw down the quickest kind of palisade we can get. Let's use the map shape that we've already been given here. Wow, that's expensive. 352 to get from there to there. Wow, okay. Forgot I said anything then. Um, what we'll do is we'll just build a nice kind of palisade circle. Like, oh my god, that's a thousand? We're dead. <laughs> Pack it up. We're dead. We're done for. Brilliant. Well, look, it's the best we can do right now. I, I don't even think we've got enough wood for all of that. 79 times 5. Yeah, we don't have enough wood for that either. But... As the wood cures, hopefully it'll be enough just to provide some cover. Now, they, the mining zombies can go through walls. I believe there are these new type of zombies since I last played it called al albino zombies or albino zombies, depending on how you want to say it, which I think are capable of just basically going up to a door and opening it, which makes things a little tricky. Uh, we might have to keep someone basically permanently on guard, maybe smiles permanently on guard outside. Two hours until the zombies come. You know what? I think we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it. Next time it's dark, the zombies will start massing up. And it will take a little time for them to build up to their, their, their kind of maximum. Again, that's kind of determined by the amount of people we've got going. So right now, with the only three people, I think they, I think it was 90 anyway they can get up to. It'll take them a long time to get up to that. So we don't have to worry about, you know, potentially 90 zombies immediately massing on us or anything. They will also kind of wander around unless they're agitated. There's a lot of, uh, there's, a lot of there's a lot of things that goes on with... Uh, zombie land that honestly we won't worry about all i care about is keeping them away and building big old walls everywhere but let's go right across here and and let's try and incorporate as much of the natural environment in as possible save us on resources which are obviously uh obviously quite difficult to come across already if we go across there and then maybe up here as well uh maybe between these two like that I guess we'll just cut down what we can that's kind of decently close and i'll unrestrict them and let them go out as we need to We've still got plenty of trees to chop down. You, we've got we've got wood curing still. It's all over. That's it. We're done for. It's gone mad. Get him, Smiles. Holy crap! <laughs> you just bullseyed that iguana in the brain from like 64 away. What is wrong with you? Hey, look at that. Okay, so that's one part of the wall dealt with. So we can... Uh, can you really not build through there? You son of a bitch. Well, on the plus side, look, that's one area dealt with. So don't worry about there. We could always put Smiles on guard here. And beef portal on guard here. And then let Ronnie keep doing his work. Do we have any herbal medicine? We've got nine of it. That's the only way. Don't forget that we can actually cure our our zombie bites. As long as they're in bed, we catch it quickly. We hit them with some medicine. They should be fine. Oh, my God. They're already here. Oh, no. Kitty is there. We've got Craig. They've got names because one of the other mods we've got going on right now. Kaida. Oh, shit. Here we go. Wow. Okay. And so it begins. Holy crap. Look at that one. That's like a... Oh, so that's one of the albino zombies I was talking about. So those ones will... Those ones are a menace. Let's, let's put it that way. I don't have much experience with them. They they move fast and they are a real ball. Like, these are the mining zombies. And I believe they can mine through... Can they actually... Yeah, they can mine through natural structures. Which is going to make that interesting. Are you just gunning for my people? Oh, you are. Okay, Smiles. We're already... It's, it's already in peril. Okay. Fucking hell, they're fast, aren't they? Bring it down, Smiles. Okay, thank you. Maybe it's already time to get some guards going. If they're coming across the river, I don't think we have to worry about it too much. It's a huge river, and it'll slow them down quite a lot. Slowly making their way up to the walls here just to kind of mass. Now, zombies can attack and destroy doors. Regular zombies, that is. As long as we don't rely too heavily on them, the only ones we have to concern ourselves with are the mining zombies, which will mine basically in a direct straight line to our people. So this guy's going to take a long time. But of course, if another one spawns in there, he'll just follow the same path. Horrifying. 
beef. It's really now the time for a walk. Okay, we're gonna have to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of micromanagement here. We got enough food to last us quite a long time. The second these walls are up, I feel a lot happier. But until then, oh what a shot! Holy crap, smiles. Just gotta stay on top of the wood production. Now we could build the palisades out the green lumber too, but I think it is probably worth being a bit more careful during these first few days, so that we can get down a much a much stronger defense. I mean that's 325, which isn't bad. Wind walls are 225. God, that tool cabinet is so cursed. So we're gonna have to build somewhere to cook our food on. Um, now campfire requires firewood, and I assume we just chop. I, I assume that's kind of the same thing, but we don't have to dry this then. Split wood ready to use as a fuel source. Great. Okay, so let's do that until we've got ten, I guess. Um, let's go twenty. That's probably okay. And then we'll throw down a campfire. We'll do it right outside the front door, so that way if we need to run away quickly, we can. Okay, there we go. Oh, a name. Well, that's a hard one. Um, what do you think? Just give your faction a name. What should our faction be called? I'm gonna leave it up to you guys again. Sorry, I haven't got anything good. I can't think of anything. If I think of something before tomorrow's episode, maybe I'll rename it. But if someone's got a really good pun, I'm all ears. For now, we're gonna be the Theus Fort. Fine. Oh God, Ronnie, be careful. Okay, Smiles, I need you to kind of guard Ronnie while he's out there. Calder's looking. Kaida. Kaida's looking very hungry. Okay. Just be careful. See if we can maybe take that one down too. Might not be a... Whoa, was that the arrow storm? Holy crap, that's cool. We might have to selectively pick some zombies off here and there. I think for the time being, we're okay and don't really need to worry about it. These two could be a bit of a problem, but... A stand down for now. Get back to your get back to your rice fields. Ah, oh, what a lovely day for farming with absolutely not a care in the world, despite the fact that we've got, like, a third of our walls built, and there's, uh... Quite a few zombies. How many are we up to right now? Only 20. That's not bad. That's manageable. We'll have to go just outside the walls tomorrow to get a bit more wood. I'm thinking we'll, we'll kind of open this up as an allowed area. We'll keep smiles on guard and we'll let the other two get grab some grab some wood. The problem is, that look at all this wood that's massed down here behind this huge horde. I think smiles probably could handle it. To 23. Look, we've got more and more spawning in. We need to keep an eye out again for special zombies. Oh my god, there's one. Toxic Splasher Zombies are exactly what they sound like. When they die, they'll explode and kind of leave. They kind of leave this resin behind. It's not really toxic more than it's just really inconvenient. People can't walk through it. So, well, they can walk through it, but it's very, very slow. What else we got here? Wazim is a regular old zombie. We've got oh, another one. Oh, shit. We might have to actually try and kill those ones from a distance. We've got another one. Wow. Okay. Uh, sir? This is private property. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Smiles, please escort him out. Oh, man. Oh, that doesn't inspire much confidence. Two. Three shots against one that has some armor. As far as I recall, the clothing does help defend them a little bit. It's not just cosmetic from what I recall. Oh, shit. This one's getting pretty close as well. Hey, maybe we should kill that one now. Sorry to wake you up again, Smiles. Let's kind of take this one out from a distance. What about Arrow Storm? Just kill it dead while it's far away so it's not super inconvenient. Yikes. They're quite tanky. <laughs> They're tankier than I remember. Yaks. Another yak. Go, 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 go. Careful, careful, careful. Okay. Let's bring you over here. Take out Wazim as well. Poor Smiles. This is why we need way more guards as fast as possible. I just hope we get a raid soon. I know that sounds bizarre. Sooner we get a raid, sooner we can capture some people, try and recruit them. Go, Ronnie. You can do it. Now, I'm thinking we leave a bit of a gap in this one. So why don't we cancel a wall like there and there. Leave a bit of a gap so we can go out and grab the wood, like I said. Just get... Let Portal finish. What are you, what are you doing right now? Okay, well, why don't we go now? We don't need to worry about more meals or any more rice in a hurry. Let's kind of bring you guys out here. See, they're all gathered on that side of the wall. As long as they stay down there. We've got line of sight from this. Or a line of sight blocked from this. I'm not too concerned about that. Toxic splashes on me up there. Could be a concern. Let's go ahead and set you to unrestricted for the time being. Some of these trees look like they could be cut down as well now, where they've kind of grown while we've been building our base. Yeah, there we go. Okay. A little bit risky, but should be fine for the time being, I think. 335 in total. Okay. Well, let's hope that is enough for the time being. We'll leave Smiles just kind of here while we, while we get those guys to haul it over. Thrombos? If you eat my rice, I'll be... Thrombos and the tribe of Peebar. Hello. Komodo. Let's let them come into the base and then we'll get Ronnie to hit him over the head with a hammer. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, I need your help. Oh, no, Komodo. Don't go any more south. Okay, there we go, there we go. Ronnie? Ronnie, get ready. Okay, just maybe, maybe come up back here, back, back here. Okay, here we go. Uh, Smiles, I need you to... Uh, don't fire at will. Let's bring Smiles down here so that if things get out of hand, Smiles can just fire off a volley, put him down. 8.81 .8 melee, double passion. 8.28 .8 shooting, single passion. You could be very good. We are going to have to turn this into uh, a prison. Doesn't really matter because, I mean, they're sleeping outside either way, right? So what difference is it going to make here? Okay, Ronnie, get ready. And get him. Fuck him up, Ronnie. Okay, you need to take position. Thrombos, now's not the time. Now is really not the time, Thrombos. Oh, God, Ronnie. Yes, that's it. Bring him down. Break his legs. Come on. Ronnie Todger. This is horrible. Oh, he's done it. I'll tear out your stomach and eat it for a snack. Okay, I'll throw you to the zombies if you keep talking like that. Ronnie is bleeding out in 18 hours, but is otherwise absolutely fine. For some reason, the guy with the knife decided to punch him in the torso rather than actually stabbing him in the torso. Very bizarre tactic. Komodo is bleeding out in six. Ronnie, when I said break his legs, I didn't literally mean break his legs off. Let's go ahead and pick up like 15 of these meals and just take them out of the prison. Otherwise, our people won't. Oh, chickens. Wow, what a kind gift. Uh, how many chickens? That's a lot of chickens. Oh, no. Not my chickens. Oh, God, chickens. Please run. Come on, you can do it. Chappers, you stay away from my chicken smiles. Get out there. Save the chickens. Oh, God, save the chicken smiles. Stay away. Oh, maybe they don't actually go for colony pets. Maybe it's just human brains they're interested in. Oh, nice. Oh, the zombies shout. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and close up this wall as well. If we do it like that, you can do it all from the same side. Then we're defending on two sides, and, and that's where all the zombies are focused too. Now, what happened to that mining zombie? He's just having the time of his life down there, isn't he? I don't think he's really trying, to be honest. Oh, my God. Hello. Angela, another albino zombie. Okay, keep an eye on you. Are you coming in? I thought you might be. Okay, smiles. Get ready. Oh, what a shot. Wow. Holy crap. Got them to haul that wood urgently so that we can seal up the uh, the hole in this wall. How are we doing? We've got another 13 hours before our next set of lumber is in. Komodo is set to recruit now. We've got 93% recruitment chance. I think they'll be pretty good. So we've got some, uh, we've, we've got some, you know, medieval kind of prosthetics mods and medicine, things like that as well. God damn, this research tray is really odd looking this time. Look at this. Smiles is guarding the chickens again. Well done, Smiles. <laughs> yeah, Smiles is a glorified fence at this point. Yeah, I, I don't like that. No, I don't like that at all. Sorry, Smiles. I've got another mission for you here. Right. I think she can probably... Oh, shit. Oh, I don't like that. Holy crap. Okay, here we go. Get ready for some more specials. A wild man. Oh, no. Not there. Oh, no, you poor guy. Are the zombies gonna... Yep. Ow, my left arm. Oh, dear. Human revenge. Something like that, yeah. And uh he's fucking gone. Wow, that's that's really tragic. So in this group we've got one of the uh, electrifying zombies. Now I think they stun people. I, th I think they're they kind of big thing is they interfere with electronic devices, turrets, that type of thing. Obviously no concern about it at all. But I think they also stun from what I remember. Wait, they're like beelining it for the base. Maybe zombie attacks will always go to the base. Which is why these guys have all kind of decided to conglomerate around the wall there. Honestly, don't remember. It's been so long since I played Zombieland. I think Smiles can probably handle it, but I wish I'd have known that before I sent it to sleep because she could have uh, really used the river to her advantage a bit more. Okay, there's one down. Fantastic. She's developing her combat skills really fast too. Okay, so we can go for some ranger training. Oh, these are like three points each, aren't they? Or something like that. Um, To be honest, I think bow training to start off with is pretty nice. There we go. So with level 2, 60% damage with bows, 60% sight, hearing, and breathing. So hopefully the accuracy changes are going to be uh, pretty key here. Come on. One more. Oh, God. Claire. Okay, 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 okay. Back off. Claire, I need you to fuck right off, please. Wait, have I got it the wrong way around? Is it that electrifying zombies can't be defeated at range? Yes. They've got that shield up. You kind of see when the uh, when the arrow hits them. Okay, fine. Makes things a little bit more complicated for micromanagement. 
Let's get Beef Portal up here then. Let's see if we can get uh, Smiles to kind of dash around the electric zombie where it's possible. See if we can take out all the others and clear the way for Beef to take out you. There we go. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Look at this. Teamwork. Well done, squad. Okay, and how are we looking elsewhere? We've got Leif potentially able to get through there. Besides that, though, things are looking kind of okay. Oh, God. Portal, be careful. Kill. Oh, he's been bitten already. Bruised, bruised, bruised. Okay, not a bite. Come on. Come on. No bites. No bites. Shit, they're strong, aren't they? Wow. Oh, she got it. Oh, maybe if they're being attacked by two people simultaneously, you can get through. Okay, that was fortunate, because if that was a bite, Portel could potentially die right now. And that's why we have to be hyper careful with this. <laughs> this should be wall number two. Oh my god! <laughs> a mega sloth has become tame. Hello. Wow. Look at how fucking happy he is. <laughs> Come on, Derek. Let's get you home, my friend. Let's put him in uh, put him in animal area. What the hell am I going to do with you? How are we even going to be able to feed something like that? So you might notice occasionally now at the edges of the walls, the zombies will start like that. When they move really, really fast, that's when they're agitated. So when zombies are in big enough groups, they'll get agitated. It makes them move faster. And I think they're more aggressive too. So we do need to be very, very cautious of that. Um, again, they're not really a problem. They can't cause us any issues. If there was a mining zombie, I'd be a bit more concerned. A lot kind of conglomerating around the top of the river there as well. I think let's not worry about it. Still focus on this wall. Get that done as soon as possible. I suppose the bonus to having so much rich soil too. So we're going to get just kind of natural wood. Yeah, look at that. We've got a bunch more that's grown already. So let's stick inside our own wall still for the time being. Get all this shit chopped as soon as possible. Let's send Smiles up to just kind of take out whatever she can. Keep a distance and just, just really go butt wild. Now they've seen that, they've started, uh, they did change direction there very briefly. To be honest, we could just send her out just to go and kill whatever she feels like, because it's good training at the end of the day. It's getting us so many levels because she's just in combat so frequently. One point available, so we could go into some of the more basic skills. Stamina, damage will come up abilities by 5%. Against those albino or sticky, sticky zombies, what are they called? Splasher zombies, something like that. Coordination, stamina cost of all abilities by 3% or endurance for more stamina overall. I think getting these two base levels of both ranger training and bow training done first it's just going to make us so powerful. That means we don't have to rely on abilities. Whereas if we only go into Arrow Storm, we're limited by, you know, how frequently Arrow Storm is obviously off cooldown there. What's Poison Trap? Um, we just... Oh, say... Druidic Poison to Armor Wooden Trap. Trap lasts indefinitely, but it's only able to deploy a limited number at any time. Oh, interesting. So if we do want a door to go out there, get more wood, get some natural resources, whatever it happens to be, we could set up a, um, not necessarily a kill box, but a kind of, uh, maybe multi-tiered entrance. Lots of different gates, that type of thing. Hey, we could throw down a big fuck-off drawbridge across here and just use that as our main entrance. Hey, there we go. Komodo, welcome, welcome. I don't have a weapon for you or anything, but I assume we can, uh, let's go into the production tab and very quickly throw down a crafting spot for the time being, I guess. There is also this. So along with the, uh, tool rack, for whatever reason, the fueled smithy is also a bit Buggy? I'm not entirely sure what's causing that. Together, they are a horrifying combo. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be fixed as we're playing out. I could go in and fix it myself, I guess, at some stage. Metal smelter. Alloying or working with metals, right? So that's how we'll make steel then in that case. Cool, okay. Um, yeah, I guess this is the only way we can really make any sort of range weapon for the timing. I guess we'll make a recurve, but it's 40 lumber. I could build like five walls with that. Composite bow there, if we get some wood pitch glue. We could throw a net over the zombie and I guess stomp on it. Uh, what else we got here? Tribal wraps? Oh man, there's so much cool stuff. Wood pitch glue out of five lumber. So with wood and more wood, we can make even better wood still. For the time being, I guess the recurve bow is better than nothing, right? Oh, I don't know. Would I prefer the walls? You know what, Komodo? You can have your knives back. I didn't even bother looking at Komodo's skills or talent weapon master. Look at this. Excellent at wielding all weapons. He could even kill using his little finger. Probably wouldn't recommend it against the zombies. Permanent plus 12 mood because he's so talented and so great. Wow. Melee dodge chance plus 8. Well, that's fantastic against the zombies, eh? Pain shop threshold 10%. So these are... These talents are added by the Rim Talents mod. It adds a bunch of medieval talents specifically, which is why I went for it. They're very, very rare. 
So the fact that we've already got a weapons master off the bat here is uh, is pretty insane, to be honest. Are you good at anything naturally? Mining? So when eventually we throw down a quarry, we could, uh, I, I guess when we kind of open this up a little bit, get him in there. To be honest, the sooner we get in a quarry, the better. What do we need? 100 steel. Shit, so we've got an alloy. We'll have to go and get a bunch of iron and a bunch of um, coal and then research alloying. Alloy together 100 steel and then throw down a quarry. Wow, that's, uh, that's a long way around it. Guess it makes it a bit more balanced, though. Oh, Derek Lodge. What are we going to do with you? It's got to be... Can we train him to kill? Because the zombies don't attack animals. They're, they'll only hunt humans. Animals will attack back if a zombie attacks them. So if Derek was to attack a zombie, the zombie would attack Derek. I think I said that backwards, but you know what I'm trying to say here. I guess we'll train you in attack and... You know what? All of it, to be honest, is quite nice. Should be growing cotton. I've fallen into this trap again, haven't I? Okay, so let's get down... I guess a decent sized growing zone over in this rich soil probably wouldn't hurt, would it? Do something like do something like that. Let's go just regular old cotton for the timing. Heal root would be really good to grow as soon as possible as well, just to try and stave off those zombie infections wherever relevant. I certainly hope those hearts aren't above Derek, otherwise I've got some real questions. Dirty cooking area, what are you talking about? It's perfectly sterile. <gasps> Komodo! Smiles. Smiles is already on it. Smiles, this needs to hit. One in a million, kid. Come on. Smiles? Smiles! Oh my god, this is horrible. Well, that was close. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was a, little, a little touch and go there, eh? We almost got uh, poor old Komodo got, got killed by food poisoning. I mean, it's technically true. Oh, God. Okay, there's another one coming in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're almost out of the woods. I say that in the most... In the most loosest sense. I mean, I would not say that 48 zombies outside our walls is out of the woods. Oh, will you... Fuck off. Get out of here. Bring him down. Why are we sleeping outside? Go to bed. Oh, right. Komodo still smiles. Please rescue Komodo. We good? No, we're not good. Please go away. Who would have guessed that these zombies would be such a gigantic pain in the ass? Anyway, let's leave it there for today. I hope you guys enjoy this concept. It's going to pick up very, very fast. Bear in mind now that we've got Komodo, we're already up to... Was it 20 zombies per person? We're up to 80 zombies now. So, this is very quickly going to get out of control. And trying to get that 50, 50 colonist colony just working within a kind of limited area limited resources low tech room. we're not gonna have hydroponics or solar panels or anything like that it's gonna be very tricky i think to get the balance right here and i think it's gonna be unlike anything we've ever done before the threats are gonna get are gonna get pretty real very very soon even when we've built our very fancy and not at all pathetic palisade balls stay tuned after the credits here and i'll be going through mod settings world seed that type of thing the kind of usual stuff that you might want to play along with a big thank you of course goes out to the patrons without which i would not be able to have enough time to record videos edit videos uh th three to sometimes four times a day and build new mod packs a big thank you today goes out to nick danger 013 lupus helveticus or kansas mr mosin alex demon boy solothal autumno unconquered q thick crack 62 mythomatic and Londa, along with everyone else, of course, the executive producer tiers over on Patreon for making the channel possible in the first place. And a thank you as well to Taco Cat, Poised as Fuck, Smirtworm, Thanks for the Loan, Bojo, Francesco R, Lilac, Mr. Awesome, Flom, Infectious, Anne Aurora, Callum James 3, Captain Cuba, Lanigan, Hawklin, Atreus Sen, Lanath, and omega door so in this section i will briefly cover the mod settings and things like that that you'll need i wanted to get you guys the world seed but it turns out right now that whenever i try and go to the world map in our save game it's broken despite the fact that i literally did it during the episode so between now and then uh something has happened <laughs> i'm not entirely sure what what specifically but i'll try and fix that ready for tomorrow um but again i'll make the save game available so if you do want to play along you can just load into that find the world seed and restart if you already want to or something like that Mod settings this time around, though, are actually fairly important, particularly Rim World of Magic, Zombieland, and the Faction Control mod. Those are the only ones I've personally changed any kind of significant effects with. Some of the other ones I've tweaked slightly, like, for example, the Quarry mod. I've made it so the quarries are infinite because we obviously have a much limited area to work on, but I've made it so they only give 50% of the resources. So you have to work a lot harder to get what you want from that. Rim World of Magic, then. 
the way I've set it up so it's only physical classes and no magic classes is very, very simple. Class options, you simply disable everything on the left-hand side, which are your mage classes. These are the classes we still have access to. Those are the physical fighter classes. Then I change the commonality of both classes down to zero. Drag the bar right to the bottom and that's all you need to do there. Then for faction options, I've changed for all of the enemy factions to have no access to mages. So again, simply drag all the bars on the left-hand side down to zero. And the event options, I have disabled all of them. Doesn't really make sense that you'll be attacked by a demon during a zombie apocalypse, a medieval zombie apocalypse, so to speak. So that's all there is to that one. Zombieland is a little more complex. And I've actually written all these up on the Steam Workshop page. If you want to follow along that rather than trying to listen right now, or you want some, something to refer back to, go and check that out instead. Hang on, I've got hiccups. Bear with me. So, Zombieland defaults to go through all of them because I don't remember which were default and which actually weren't. When do zombies appear? Only when it's dark. I thought that was fairly appropriate. We could say all the time. It doesn't really make any difference, to be honest, in the, in the long term. We're going to hit the cap before long anyway, so it, it really doesn't make that much difference. Where do the zombies come from? I said the map edges rather than soft ground. Otherwise, if they come from soft ground, they can pop up in your farms, which will make things very, very difficult. When, what will zombies attack? I believe I set to default, so human-like creatures. I've set so animals attack zombies. Otherwise, if, if, I don't know how zombies would just passively attack animals. I guess, you know, if you've got like one of the exploding zombies or something like that. I don't really know. Um, but this makes it so that the animals will attack the zombies if the animals are attacked. So, as you can see there, animals will attack zombies when they hunt or get aggressive. I guess maybe if they're in big packs or something like that. Anyway. What will zombies destroy? I've set to only doors and only when they're agitated. I believe that's default. Zombie senses are normal. Zombie range of group gets too large. So that's set to default as well. I've turned off zombies recover from injuries. Just because we're playing medieval uh, might make things a little bit too difficult for us. You know, this is balanced for charge rifles. I will assume not for, well, or, or rifles, high power guns rather than bows and arrows. I have not turned on those zombies are easy to kill i want them to be a challenge but not you know like a long-term challenge zombies will eat injured creatures and corpses now as for special zombies i disabled like i said the suicide bomber zombies and the tanky operator zombies because they didn't really fit the medieval theme whereas i've increased toxic splashes zombies mining zombies electrifying zombies and the albino zombies up to three percent so the ordinary zombies only account for 89 percent of total zombies these are all default so days until zombies come three Never more than 500 zombies I've got it set for now, but as we increase our colony, I'll kind of balance that depending on... Ideally, th the maximum we can have without it lagging the game too much, without it causing too much delay in, in actual gameplay. So I'm going to change that as we go along. That is entirely down to how powerful your PC is. So, do or, or personal preference. Let's place it like that. Um, but I'm personally going to set it to the maximum, and I'll experiment with that as we go. A zombie speed I adjusted slightly, I believe. So 0.2 times if they're calm, but if they're excited, 1.3 times. That actually might be default. I think that is default in hindsight. So um, zombies can anger animals. So will animals become manhunts when attacked by zombies? Yes, but I've got them set to attack zombies. So I'm not maybe they just hunt when they get hungry. I'm not entirely sure. Zombies are regular damage. Reduce gun turret consumption. If you're playing with not medieval, obviously this could be essential. Otherwise, you're going to be constantly firing... Uh, just a shitload of ammo at the zombies, you know, and constantly be replenishing with turrets. It doesn't really matter for us because we're playing on uh, medieval. As for the infection. Oh, I did adjust this, but it seems like it's gone back. I adjust this multiple times, actually. I don't know why it's reset. So, risk that a zombie bite is infectious, I set down to what, 50%. Actually, I kept that as default. The uh, time until the infection is known, I set to two hours. Time infection is treatable, I had on eight hours. Gives you a window of six hours to treat it. Treatment in bed stops infections, but you've got to be bloody fast. And when I say bloody fast, you've got literally got six hours there. Otherwise, your person has gone forever. And I set the duration of the infection right down low as well. So if you miss it, they'll turn real, real fast. So you've got to kill them, you know, take their organs, do whatever you've got to do there before they turn into a zombie. I also disabled zombie serum. I feel like I changed it when I started the campaign rather than the default. So that's something worth remembering. This is all down to you as well. So zombies drop blood. I've turned off because we're going to have quite a high amount of zombies on the map. Automatic avoidance of zombies I've personally turned off as well. Just because any extra pathfinding remote will cause some delay. It's worth pointing out. Things like the vampire mod has custom pathfinding. Save our ship to has custom pathfinding. It will add a slight extra delay in gameplay lag, so to speak. Obviously, it's not lag, but I think that's what everybody kind of knows it as. Um, survival meals to Twinkies are relevant in my playthrough. Obviously, down to you. Everything else I've kept... 
the same at that point. So I'll publish that to the cloud. Why not? Just so that I actually remember for the future. The only other thing I changed at that point, again, of particular note, and this you can all customize to however you want to play, really, but the uh, faction options. So 12 total factions in the world. Uh, I actually think I lowered that down to six again. This hasn't saved, but I, I don't know exactly what's caused that. It doesn't really matter too much. What I did was disable all the base RimWorld tribes with the exception of the Pirate Band and the Empire because those will have certain effects on gameplay. If there are no Pirate Bands, you won't get certain events firing. Similar, if there is no Empire, you won't get any Empire events spawning. You'll get the quests appearing, but they'll be kind of malformed. So you get a lot of errors showing up in the actual text itself. So I'd recommend always keeping those to one, but I disabled all of the rest of them. Then, in terms of modded factions, I believe I turned on... Um, so I disabled pretty much everything here. Zombies are enabled. Uh, I think I actually kept on the arcane folds. Zombies I uh, kept enabled just by default, because you probably should. Um, I think I kept a medieval warband turned on and a kingdom turned on. And that was it. So, to recap, one arcane fold... Zombies are left enabled, medieval warband, and a medieval kingdom of your choice. Just to give some variation there on who appears in the world map. But that is basically it for settings this time around. Again, I haven't really touched much else. It's, it's entirely down to you how you want to set things up here. Um, personal preference entirely. And as per usual, there will be a full model list available up on the Steam Workshop. I've started work on it. I haven't finished it quite yet. Um, but it's got kind of the mod settings I just talked about. It's got the load order up there already. Um, let me just pull up the Steam Workshop page so you guys can, can see what we've got so far here. Um, there we are. So that's, that's all I've got going on right now is just Medieval Zombieland, the load order, um, and some of the settings there worth remembering, of course, the full mod pack. I think I made one or two adjustments since I made this. Uh, no, it's actually, it's actually perfect the way it is. So this will be live by the time you're watching this and probably will have some install instructions, that type of thing to, uh, to obviously set up with your game. So that is basically everything. Have fun with your medieval zombies and good luck because I think this is going to be a lot harder than maybe that first episode let on.